There is tons of progress being made on getting Linux running well on the Apple M1 hardware. Recently on this channel, I've been mainly talking about the GPU drivers just because they are, you know, visually exciting. But there is tons of other driver work being done and much, much more. Now, all of this work is being done under the banner of Asahi Linux with the eventual goal of getting these changes merged into the mainline Linux kernel so you could go and pick a distro at random, Ubuntu, Pop OS, Arch, whatever you want to use, and then install it, and it just works. But being in that state is still a very, very long way away. Now, while this has been happening, there's been another chip lurking in the back of everyone's minds, something that could basically derail all of the future work going on on this project, because Apple didn't stop with the M1 chip, there is now the M2 chip, and it is publicly available. So Hector Martin, the guy who was running the project, had to go out and buy a new device. And when he wanted to get the M2 chip, because he wanted to get it basically as soon as possible, the MacBook Air wasn't out yet, so he had to shell out for a MacBook Pro, which is very, very expensive. And arguably, not very pro either, but it is what it is. So the question then is, is everything basically a waste of time now? Will everything need to be completely reworked? Is this system so different from the M1 system that it doesn't really have any shared common code? Is supporting Apple's hardware without direct support from Apple completely impossible? No, not everything is going to have to be changed, but some things obviously do need a bit of reworking. And because of that, Hector did what Hector does best and got to work reverse engineering. And by that I mean doing all of the work on a 12 hour live stream. Now, obviously, I'm not going to show you the entire live stream here. If you want to go and watch it, it will be linked in the description down below. But Hector did go and post a basically a set of things that were achieved during the stream. First thing being that it basically just booted Linux on the first try, which is always a very, very good start. It doesn't mean that everything is working exactly like it should, but it's at least booting into the Linux environment. The NVMe drive and the SMC chip are basically working as expected. There are some warnings that are being printed out, but those warnings are expected to be there. Now, the SMC chip is the system management controller. This is responsible for controlling things like the fan speed, the status lights, the system performance, the power supply. As the name would suggest, it is a controller for the system management. And then with a bit more work, USB started working fine as well. But there were still a few things that needed to be dealt with. Firstly, speakers remained untested. That may mean they work, that may mean they don't work, they were untested at the time. Also, the keyboard and trackpad needs a new driver. IPMI needs a new driver. He meant to say SPMI as he corrects in a following tweet. And then also PCIe needs the fuse map in M1N1 to initialize. The fuse map is basically a table that explains where different bits are meant to go. And his plan was to basically reverse engineer this from the existing Apple driver. One thing I want to mention is the audio side is primarily being handled by someone known as Martin, otherwise known as Povic. And unlike people like Lena, Hector, and Alyssa, he doesn't really get anywhere near as much attention in the media. So if you want to go and support the work that he's doing, I will leave his GitHub sponsor in the description down below. Now, from an outside perspective, this might still sound like a lot of work that needs to be done. So following that, Hector did another stream. This For time he did a six hour stream where he wanted to address the PCI SPMI and dock channel, which is going to be the driver for that keyboard and trackpad sort of stuff. So, turns out, in the following tweet he did after the stream, that um, SPMI didn't actually need a new driver, it just needed a little bit of tinkering. Also, PCIe works like it should, making the fuse map really wasn't a challenge, and Wi-Fi probably works as well. At this time, he hadn't tested the user space, but it looks like it should be working. As for the dock channel and MTP, which is the keyboard and trackpad processor, these have been thoroughly reverse engineered and the M1N1 POC works. The rest is just writing the relevant, rather simple Linux drivers and looking at the byte protocol details, which will be easy. At this time, he'd done 18 hours of development. And then he made the mistake that 
everybody else has made before, and I've done plenty of times in things that I've been doing. He predicted when the work was going to be done. At this point, it's pretty likely that M2 will be at feature parity with M1 within less than 24 hours of actual work. So we have six hours left to get to 24 hours, so we probably thought maybe it was going to take, you know, five or maybe five and a half hours to get everything done. Well, following this, he did another stream. This one was eight hours long, so it went a little bit over time, but not as bad as it certainly could have been. And following that stream, posted this tweet. It's just HID over Doc Channel. How hard could it be? Eight hours later, there's five deep nested structures, a shared memory ring buffer, and I'm writing yet another plist style serializer and contemplating how to package a new firmware for Linux with metadata. Because Apple. The good news is, I think this is all required for touch bar support on M1 and M22. So yay, more common code. Probably. While there were obviously going to be some differences between the M1 and the M2, it's not like the jump from x86 to ARM like when they jumped to the M1 chips. They were never going to completely throw out the previous system and design something entirely new. If they can't do that on things that probably should be fixed, like the sequence of MacBooks that had a ribbon cable that was too short, they're definitely not going to do that when it comes to designing a CPU. So because there is a lot of shared hardware and shared design, there's obviously going to be a lot of shared code as well. And the thing with the M1 and the M2, it's not like this is a new line of CPUs that Apple has never really been exploring. The M1 is just an A14 chip, and the M2 is just an A15 chip. There are some obviously modifications there, but at the core, that's all they are. And they've been using this in the mobile line for years at this point, and they're always going to be an iteration on the previous generation that was made. So if you want to keep an eye on what Hector is doing, and pretty much anything going on with us here Linux, I recommend you just go and follow Hector's Twitter account, because anything remotely important, he is bound to tweet about. And if you like the work that's going on with this project, I highly encourage you to either go and support it with dev work if that's something you know how to do, or if you want to, go and support it monetarily as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you have an M1 system? Are you going to buy an M2 system? Or do you just not care about Apple whatsoever and you have no idea why someone is trying to get Linux running on their hardware? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, Go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the only linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays, and that's going to be it for me. So, I'm out.